Um, I would invite all on the who are currently watching with questions, put them into the pad that I can ask them. I cannot monitor the IRC concurrently. Mm -mm. Um, so the first question that we have on the pad is concerning why you have switched from OCaml. Maybe the person has missed it in the talk, if you have mentioned it. Why have you switched from OCaml to, in this case, I guess, Rust? <laughs> Yeah, um, I mentioned like with writing a language server that I wrote mine uh, for my company in OCaml, but I wouldn't recommend it just in general unless like you're doing something specific with OCaml. Um, and the reason for that, and I recommended Rust or like TypeScript, is like OCaml is great. It's very performant, um, but its cross compilation story is not great. It's like really hard to cross compile like from one one platform to another. And then like the ecosystem and its standard library is also not great. And like Rust, its cross compilation is great. Um, its ecosystem is great. OCaml is great if you need to use it, but it's just, it's not ideal. Um, and there's just also no good examples of a language server in OCaml. Uh, there's the official like OCaml language server but they use a ton of super advanced language features like like module functors and like a bunch of other random stuff. So it's not really readable, but Rust, there's Rust Analyzer, which is readable. In TypeScript, there's like a million different ones. So it's less of a, not OCaml is like, it's not that OCaml isn't great. It's more of a, these other languages would probably just be easier, so. I guess in the integration to, for example, like NeoVim or so other editors are just revenue fine because of the LSP, I guess. Sorry, can you say that again? Um, the LSP, so it's a standard LSP specification that you're using. So you can also, for instance, use it in other editors, like for instance, NeoVim or so. Yeah, yeah, you can use it. It's most, most editors nowadays support it. Like obviously Emacs, NeoVim, Sublime, VS Code, Intel, all the IntelliJ ones. So yeah, that's that's the fun part. You don't have to write 10 different languages to get a bunch of editor support. Or so experience writing it. So I, I didn't have really time to hear into your talk. So I'm sorry if I, re if I ask you questions that you have oh, already yeah. said. Uh, how was the, the experience of writing an LSP? So have you any knowledge beforehand or do you just read it all on yourself? Yeah, I there's not a ton of documentation, which is why like what motiv motivated me to do this talk. Um, basically, I just like looked at the specification and I knew Rust Analyzer was cool. And so I looked at Rust Analyzer and then I looked at like PyWrite and I kind of just went from there. Uh, I, I found out about LSP because I already Using Emacs, I already knew about it. And I was like, this is going to be easier than something else. So yeah, there's the the experience was fine. Um, it, it's just a lot of wiring stuff up. It's not a lot of like hard thinking until you get to like performance heavy stuff. Like, so for SEMGRAP, like we're doing a ton of uh, like code parsing and like analyzing. And so that's picks up like a ton of processing power. So like for stuff like that, like now you have to think about caching and like ordering things. Um, so that part's hard, but that's more of a like very much application specific thing. Right. For anything in the IRC chat, I think not. There's nothing I can see. Uh, no questions, that's kind of it, to be honest. Um, I cannot really ask questions concerning LSP specific. Um, yeah, no worries. Good question, what could be asked? Let's call, let's ask something very unspecific concerning the Emacs usage. Uh, when have you started? How did you came uh, through it and stuff like this? Yeah, um, I like, and when I was in high school, me and my friends just were like, got obsessed with Linux for whatever reason. And then like we traveled <laughs> down like the like 
the free software like we just thought that was like very entertaining and like interesting to read about all the free software stuff and they were like then we we're like yeah that's cool and so we all started using linux and i'm like well you know if i'm using free software i'm gonna use emacs and so i started using emacs like just to like try it out and then i kind of got like i feel like stockholm syndrome into it and now i've realized like i don't know now that now that i've done the like actual work to get into emacs it's just there's so much more I can do with it. Um, but yeah, it was it was somewhat unintentional. I, I probably ha have the same course. So I've started like two years ago using Emacs. Mm -hmm. um, and also just, oh, there's at, at first some cool people on YouTube, so systems crafters and, and people like this. And also uh, VS Code. I used a lot of VS Code beforehand. Mm -hmm. And then VS Codium because open source. And then, oh, yeah. are there any other alternatives? Then I came to like NeoVim and Emacs and often switching around. But I stick to Emacs at some point, to be honest. Yeah, I think, yeah, Emacs also just looks really cool. I will say that. Um, and also just like, I, I like Vim. Vim is cool. But like being able to like write Lisp and like modify your editor on the fly is just like very appealing to me. Uh, I don't know. Emacs was tough at first because like all the like default key bindings are just kind of like, and then and then I read somewhere someone was like, yeah, well, uh, Richard Stallman uses evil mode, so it's okay. <laughs> I was like, all right, I can. That's that's like blessing enough for me. Like I'm just gonna switch to evil mode, and I was like, this is way, way better as far as key bindings go kind of relate so I'm, I switched for I think half a year to the default uh, key bindings from from Vim beforehand mm -hmm. I switched back to evil and now I'm losing some kind of hybrid style so it's it's kind of weird yeah um, mm -mm. but we have a question on the pad so um, what are the corner cases limitations and other issues you encountered in implementing an LSP server with client in Emacs that were surprising yeah, I would say the corner cases and limitations are definitely like, once again, they're going to be very application specific, but it's usually just the performance part. So like, like I was saying before, right, in general, if you're doing language tooling, you're going to be doing either parsing or interpreting or something like that, which is very just like computationally heavy. And so if you're trying to like do that stuff while someone is editing a file, right, like every keystroke, so every like one to two seconds, um, if they have a fast computer, that's great, but a lot of people don't have like that fast of a computer that they can go and like do compilation every single keystroke. So like I would say I would say the like limitation is just how fast your computer is and how good you are at like implementing caching for like whatever you're doing. Um, that's also just the main issues I've run into is just it's it's a constant uphill battle. People will people will uh somehow find larger and larger files, you'll end up with files that are like thousands, like tens of thousands of lines long. And you think, yeah, surely no one, surely no one would expect like instantaneous response for like, like editing a file that has like tens of thousands of lines, but then they do. Um, as far as corner cases go, I would say the corner case is like, just in, in general is actually distributing the language server. Um, because like writing the language server is fine, uh, like wiring everything up is fine. But then like once you actually have to go and distribute it, well now you're distributing in a binary. Uh, like I was saying before with OCaml, doesn't have great co cross compilation. So like for for SimGrep for our language server, we target Linux and Mac OS, and we have a ton of people who use Windows, but like compiling OCaml for Windows is basically impossible. So like. Our corner case there, the way we solved it was like now we're like transpiling OCaml to JavaScript, which is a huge can of worms. Like it's 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 a lot of fun. It's very interesting, but like it's it's not ideal. And so that's why I was saying before, like I recommend like Rust or TypeScript because those are way more portable and a lot easier to install, and you don't have to worry about any of that weird packaging stuff. Um, so yeah. I would I would say that's like the main corner case and the main limitation is just speed and caching. Um, you mentioned these obscure large files, so someone doesn't want to refactor or something. Um, 
how did you saw so did you have any way to s still be relatively performant when they have big fights or is it just not supported i don't care yeah no we so we support um larger files now and the way we ended up doing that uh we so so semgrep is like you write this generic pattern like you kind of write the language but then there's like these like other like symbols and stuff that are included in that this like meta language and so what happens is, is most languages get uh they get parsed and then into a syntax tree right like whatever the language's syntax tree is and then they get uh the syntax tree gets converted into this like we call it like an abstract syntax tree which is like abstract from like any like languages specific syntax tree and so then we can cache that, which is really good because like if someone types something, like we don't have to go through and do like the full parsing and like converting. We only have to do it incrementally. Uh and so that's that's how we dealt with that. Or the other option is that we just we just cache whatever the previous results are and then run it asynchronously and they might get it delayed. But we've we've ended up doing more AST caching, which is which is fun and cool. Sounds good. So we have here a question Concern, uh, from Blaine. If eGlot is a subset of LSP mode, can eGlot conflict with LSP mode in bo uh, if both are present in your initial .el file? Yeah, so I haven't played around with eGlot mode a ton, so I'm not 100% sure. I think all of the like key bindings and commands, if you just like install it like out of the box, um, I think they're different. So I don't think there's like any like overlap as far as that stuff goes, but you will have the overlap of like you enter, like you start a major mode for like some language, like they'll both probably start the language server and provide diagnostics and everything. And so then now you're getting like, you're, you're just like doubling the work your computer is doing. So there's that conflict. But if you, if you prefer eGlot mode or LSP mode for like one language or framework, um, like one major mode, in LSP mode for the other, I think you you should be fine. All right. Just to let you know, we have like one minute um, on the stream. <laughs> Hi, Leo. Um, then we just switch back um, to the pre-recorded stuff, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. yeah let's, uh, hi, sorry for the rude interruption, but I'm, I'm just uh, doing a little bit of timekeeping. Uh, so thank you so much, Austin. Sadly, I wasn't able to follow the Q&A because I was in the other track answering questions. Mm -hmm. uh, if Austin, you want to stay and answer uh, some more questions, feel free to do so. Um, you know, people tend to start talking as soon as we go off air, and I wouldn't yeah. be surprised with LSP that people would do the same. Uh, we're going to move on for for this track. We're going to move on in twenty seconds to the next one. So, Flory, thank you for hosting. Austin, thank you for your, all your answers, mm -hmm. and we'll see you in a bit. Cool. Thanks. See ya. All right. Thanks for the Q and A. All right, you are now off air. Thank you so much, uh, Austin. I'm going to go back, run in the background, and thank you, Flowey, for everything. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> and thanks. Hey, bye -bye. Uh, yeah, have a nice, probably a nice day at your own. Yeah. Yeah, it's Good still, on. it's like lunchtime for me, so. OK, here it's like 9 o'clock, 9 PM, so. PM, yeah. Um, thanks for the talk. Sorry for the inconvenience with not having any any questions, really. Uh, oh yeah, no worries. It's like there's like no documentation on any of this stuff, so I didn't really expect any. <laughs> yeah, I, I was kind of interested when I, I jumped into NeoVim. Um, I write it one or two things on my own, but never really got really deep into it. In university, we had like compiler design and stuff like this, but not really specific. So I was. Yeah. Kind of yeah, that's that's the hard part. Is like it's LSP is cool, but then you have to like deal with all the like compiler stuff and programming language theory. Um, so yeah. yeah, so it's, it shouldn't be too comp. I had uh, not really a question, so, but it worked out fine. Thanks for, yeah. for the Q and A. Mm and -hmm. if I have any questions to OCaml, um, LSPs, you will get an email from me. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> then.